just a gorgeous night here in Arizona. We're at Peoria Sports Complex as we bring you Chicago Cubs Cactus League Baseball. The Cubs and the Mariners tonight. And Spring Training Baseball at Comcast Sportsnet Chicago is presented by Apt Electronics, Appliances, and more. Great to have you with us, Jim Deshays and Len Casper with you. Travis Wood will get the ball tonight, and it's an important spring for a guy who's looking for a bounce-back season. Yeah, uh, presumably in a battle for the fifth uh, spot in the rotation with Edwin Jackson, who had a miserable day yesterday. Travis Wood trying to bounce back from a rough season uh, last year. So far, so good this spring for Travis Wood. He's only allowed one walk so far this spring. That was an issue for him last year. The walk rate uh, considerably higher last year than it was in 2013. Pretty much the same mix. He's It'll give you a fastball about 88 to 90. Throw that cutter in. Here are the numbers I was talking about. 2013, an all-star campaign for the lefty, fashioning a 3.11 ERA, almost two full runs higher last year. So somewhere in the middle is probably the real Travis Wood. And if that's your fifth starter, well, that's pretty darn good. Yeah, and the one good thing about Travis, he fields his position well. He's a great athlete. And uh, Joe Madden might use him off the bench with the bat on occasion. Yeah, we saw him do it here the other night. Uh, he swings about very well. He's been one of the best hitting pitchers in all of baseball for the last three years or so. All right, and J.D., we may see a few starters in terms of position players go deeper into the ball game here as we're about a week and a half away. A week and a half away before opening night on Sunday at Wrigley Field. So, yeah, expect to see the starters maybe get three A-Bs tonight. The starting pitchers obviously will stretch things out. And, you know, Hector Rondon's here. Maybe he pitches the ninth in a safe situation. Managers typically towards the end of spring like to try to play it a little bit like the real season. And a guy with a really good arm, Taiwan Walker, young pitcher for the Mariners will start tonight for Lloyd McClendon. We'll have Cubs baseball late night action from AZ coming up next. Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Apt Electronics, appliances, and more. Pleasing people since 1936. 84 degrees. 14% humidity, a very light breeze at uh, 7 miles an hour, and a big crowd on hand here in Peoria, northwest suburbs of uh, Phoenix. As we get you set for the Cubs and the Mariners, hard-throwing right-hander Taiwan Walker will face this Cubs starting lineup. Dexter Fowler will lead it off. He'll play center field. Chris Coughlin's had a nice spring. He's in left. Miguel Montero trying to get on track. He's the catcher batting third. Starlin Castro, the shortstop, cleaning up. Good to see him back in the lineup a day after his 25th birthday. Ryan Sweeney in right. Tommy LaStella at third. Mike Old plays first. You see the pitcher batting eight. That's Travis Wood. And Arizmendi Alcantara playing second and hitting ninth. 
take a look at the Mariners defensively tonight. Uh, you will call Justin Ruggiano, former Cub, now Mariner. He's in left tonight. Austin Jackson in center. Nelson Cruz will DH. Uh, for the most part for the Mariners, but we'll get occasional playing time in the outfield. Kyle Seeger, very good at third base. Miller and Cano up the middle. Logan Morris in the first baseman. Mike Zanino does the catching in. Taiwan Walker, big hard thrown right hander, 6'4, 235, mid 90s fastball. Came in battling for a fifth uh, starter spot in the rotation and appears to be a lock. He's had an outstanding spring training. Lance Barrett will call balls and strikes. Scott Barry, Brian Knight, and Corey Blazer on the bases. And a nice crowd tonight. Mariners have drawn well, averaging over 8,000 per contest. And a fastball in there for a strike on Fowler to get us started. Now, when you say nice crowd, do you mean in numbers or temperament? Well, I, numbers, but I'm going to go out on a limb business. and say that they're nice people as well. Oh, and two. Walker uh, made five starts for the Mariners last year. He also worked out of the bullpen three times. One, two, lost three. Had a 261 ERA. Right at Brad Miller. Here comes Coglin. Cubs have lost their last two here in Cactus League action. 9-12 and a tie. And the Mariners are 9-10 and two ties. Cubs beat the Mariners 12 to 10 in Mesa on Saturday. This is their final meeting here of the spring. In terms of stuff, Taiwan Walker has a lot of it. Ooh, that was a split. 6 4, 230. Only 22 years old. Drafted in 2010, supplemental pick after the first round, 43rd pick overall that year in the draft. He's been a top uh, number of the prospect list for the last couple of seasons. What does that uh, wind up remind you of? Stays real tall, doesn't he? He's got a little Sutcliffe going on. I, uh, also, the way he starts, a little Jake Arietta. Mm -hmm. Almost starts from the yeah. scratch. Very little movement. Right at the beginning of his delivery. And yeah, I see the Sutcliffe there too with the ball behind the back. Mm -hmm. Kyle Seeger. The two ground outs, and now the catcher, Miguel Montero. Yeah, it starts from the set position. It's not a whole lot of wasted motion. Picks up the leg. Really does a nice job getting on top and driving the ball downhill. Taking advantage of his height. Miguel, four out of 26 with a double and a homer. I wouldn't say, you know, this is a time of spring when guys start to get serious. They're serious from the first pitch of the Cactus League, but you can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And guys who are slumping, uh, imagining or thinking, all right, I got to get locked in here. I've got about 10 days left. I really want to take advantage of all the plate appearances they can get before it starts to count for good. Swing and a miss on the splitter to end the inning. A 1-2-3 top of the first for Walker. Travis Wood to the mound when we come back to Peoria.
Here's how the Mariners will line up offensively. Former Brewer Ricky Weeks learning to play the outfield. The former second baseman, the DH tonight, Austin Jackson's in center. Robinson Cano in the middle of that lineup, along with newcomer Nelson Cruz. Kyle Seeger is at third. Former Cub Justin Ruggiano in left. Logan Morris in the first baseman. Mike Zunino hit under 200 last year, but he cranked 22 homers. This is his 24th birthday. And the shortstop, Brad Miller. Boy, a lot of 300 averages in that lineup. The bottom eight guys. Well, let's take a look at the Cubs defensively here. Uh, Chris Coglin's going to man left field. Dexter Fowler center. Ryan Sweeney's the right fielder tonight. Third to first will go Tommy LaStella. Starlin Castro back in action. He's had a tender groin. He's... 100% now. Alcantara will play second. Mike Gold's going to get a start at first base tonight. Miguel Montero behind the plate for Travis Wood, who's having a nice spring. He's made four starts. He's 1-0 with a 377. He's given up a lot of hits, but he's been able to limit the damage for the most part. Facing a familiar foe in Ricky Weeks. And a first pitch strike. As a Brewer, 1,044 games as a second baseman, eight as a DH. But uh, we saw him the other day in the outfield. So he's trying to learn some new positions. First base, possibly. And had a nice bounce back year in limited duty with the Brewers last season. 274 and under 300 trips to the plate. Hit eight home runs. Sharing time with Scooter Jeanette. one the other way for a leadoff single. I don't think that's what Travis Wood wanted to throw that two-strike pitch. Good two-strike approach, however, by Ricky Weeks. Looks like they're trying to backdoor something and it cut over the heart of the plate. It'll bring up Austin Jackson. The center fielder came over from Detroit in the three-team David Price blockbuster involving the Rays and the Tigers. Originally drafted by the Yankees. Outside, ball one, one and one. I really struggled after joining Seattle last year. I mean, that's fairly typical. Most players, when they come to Seattle, are going to see those numbers go down a bit. Safeco Field, one of the toughest, if not the toughest, hitting ballparks in the major leagues. Wood with a check on the runner. That is Rich Donnelly. Good to see Rich back in the big leagues, the third base coach. And Chris Woodward at first. Rich Donnelly uh, had worked with Jim Leland for many years. One of the funniest guys in baseball, mm -hmm. Rich Donnelly. Yep. Well, there's a lot of those guys back over here now. Lloyd McClendon managing. He worked under Jim Leland, as did uh, Donnelly. Trent Jewett Trent is Jewett. here. Yep. Andy Van Slyke is on this staff. Sold into right. It's going to hold up for Sweeney for the first out. We'll bring up Robinson Cano, second year of a 10 year, $240 million free agent contract. Six time All Star. He's won two gold gloves. In each of the last five years, he's been in the top six in American League MVP voting. I think when the Mariners made that signing, J.D., there were a lot of people going, wait a minute. Ten years? There's no way he's going to be... An elite player by the time the 10 years are up, if he's even in the big leagues. But I think one way to look at it is, you know, if they get maybe more value out of 
Cano than what they're paying in the first five years as he hits it to the opposite field and Weeks will make the turn. He's going to try to get third and he will. The throw will go behind him to second. But Cano's 32 years old, so by the time his contract ends, he's basically going to be 40. But if they get, you know, five, six really good years out of him and they win a World Series, mm -hmm. then the 10 years, 240 will be worth it. Yeah, hard to think that a you know, middle infielder approaching 40 years of age would still be productive. But if you can still swing the bat, you could DH him and you may get, you know, some production out of him towards the end of that contract. But, yeah, I think this was all about you know, getting him in, having to go that far just to get him signed and then you know, hope to get five, six good years out of him and live with, <clears throat> with, with the rest of it. Now Nelson me. Cruz. He signed a four-year, $57 million deal over the winter. The Mariners really have never been able to replace Edgar Martinez. Just have not gotten much production out of the DH spot. Last year, Cruz with the Orioles was the only guy to hit 40 home runs in the big leagues. And I don't think it's a wild guess to say he probably won't hit 40 this year, considering half his games will be played at safe. Yeah, goal. so there you go. So what's the let's go with over under and I'll say 30. Would you take the over or the under? Ooh. I have to think about it. <laughs> so the rest of the division. Good hitters park in Arlington. Minute Maid Park is more neutral than people think. It yields a lot of cheap home runs, but it takes away a lot in the big part of the ballpark. I guess I'd take the under because he's only hit over 30 twice. And he's got Oakland, Anaheim. Yeah, I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to give him, I'm going to say 29. Okay. And then his final bat of the year is going to deep drive to the warning track. And we're going to go, wow, remember that conversation we had in spring training? <laughs> it's amazing. I'm guessing we will forget about that this conversation by Friday. <laughs> As he walks, and the bases are now loaded for Kyle Seeger. Do you remember the conversation we had in was, was it Vegas? Do you remember to do something next year to answer some questions oh, yeah. from this year? Um, whether betting goes up or down on July or on Friday the 13th. Oh, okay. Is that it? I don't or, remember. <laughs> You see that, or do you get a discount on the corned beef and cabbage on uh, St. Patrick's Day? It was one of those two. Seeger got a seven-year extension in November with a hundred million. Some trouble here for Travis Wood. Outside ball one. And Travis more of a fly ball type pitcher, so tough for him to dial up the ground ball, but that's ideally what he'd like to get here, obviously. Get a ground ball, get two, and get out of here. Driven a deep center, and it's going to be caught by Fowler. The two lead runners will advance, including Weeks to the plate. It's a sack fly for Seager, 1-0 Mariners. Well, despite the addition of Cano, the Mariners still struggled to score runs last year, hence the deal to sign Cruz. But they're optimistic because of the addition of Cruz, the development of Seager. Obviously, Cano is still very much in his prime. And have a chance to be a much better offensive club this year. Now, ex-Cub Justin Ruggiano, 81 games last year with the Cubs in his only season. On the north side, he was on the DL twice due to leg issues, but was productive when healthy. And he bounces into a fielder's choice, and that will end the inning. Couple of hits, and the first run of the night. It's one zip Seattle after an inning.
Mariners won. Cubs uh, no score. Hey, Cub fans, let's go. Get your tickets to the opening series against the Cardinals as the 2015 Cubs look to make some noise at Wrigley Field. Opening night tickets are sold out. The tickets are still available for the Tuesday and Wednesday matchups. With Cardinals, get your tickets at Cubs.com. 1-0 Seattle. Well, that's a lot to read. She better sister that that sign would get on. Oh, Debbie, sister. I win again. Love Barb. <laughs> Barb's always winning. It worked. Castro sends one back up the middle. It'll be fielded and dropped by Miller. Should be a hit, actually. Because it wasn't hit that hard. And it is a single for Castro. They pulled off his ball a little bit, hit it off the end of the bat. It's got a little top spin on it. Miller gets caught in between. He should have just charged it. Maybe he thought Cano was going to come over and try to make a play on it. Goes as a base hit, but it wasn't a real clean play by Miller. Wouldn't you know it, Castro back in action, and he hits a ground ball that he has to really bust it down the line on. Yeah, he had the, the tightness in his right groin. He felt like he could have played yesterday, but Joe Madden's theory, by and large, especially here in spring training, is when a guy says he's 100%, give him one more day. Sweeney cranks one to deep right. Nice play grab by Cruz. Not sure how much outfield he's going to play this year, but that was a nice play. Kind of drifting back, took one peek to find the wall, realized he had plenty of time, hauled it in. What a good swing of the bat by Ryan Sweeney. Lestella. Fastball oh. strike mid 90s stuff from Taiwan Walker. I was reading about Walker earlier, and uh, a couple scouting reports I came across raved about his curveball as well. He's broken it out yet. There it is. Right on cue, J.D. Mm -hmm. And he got the call. And over the top, 12 to 6 type breaking ball. About close to 20 miles an hour off of the fastball. And kind of got derailed last year. And a right shoulder impingement started the season on the shelf and was out until mid June. Miller the flip, Cano the turn. Robinson Cano really smooth on that turn. After an inning and a half, 1 0 Mariners.
windows, siding, and doors. Call 866-4-FELDCO. We're now the Mariners' bottom half of the second. Better stretch of those hammies. The Cubs will host the 10th annual Race to Wrigley Charity Run. Presented by ATI Physical Therapy. It's uh, Saturday, April 25th. Takes place outside of Wrigley Field. And in recognition of the race to Wrigley's 10th anniversary, the Cubs will introduce an additional race to Let's Run to 10K. Sign up at racetowrigley.com. As we mentioned, a big crowd here tonight. This place holds over 12,000. Mariners share this facility with the Padres. Opened up in 1994, 20 miles northwest of downtown Phoenix. Lomo, Logan Morrison. Towering pop fly caught by Chris Coglin. Here's a catcher, Zunino. On his 24th birthday. Putting together a nice spring. Uh, I got tweeted earlier. What's that trumpet noise in the background? I think it's a trumpet. Are you hearing it? I just heard it, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can find the trumpeter before the night is over. My theory is, until we know for sure, if it sounds like a trumpet, I'm going with trumpet. <laughs> if it walks like a trumpet, talks like a trumpet, <laughs> and by golly, it's a trumpet. I remember going to hockey games at the uh, Montreal Forum when I was a kid. There was a trumpeter there, very distinguished gentleman. Mm -hmm. and two strikes on Zunino. Shortstop Brad Miller on deck. Cubs not using the DH tonight. Travis Wood actually batting eight. Ground ball to Castro. And he'll get it to Olt. No problem. Two down. And Wood did a nice job of avoiding a big number there in the first. Holding the Mariners to just a one. Now he's got seven, eight, nine here in the second. Usually that's an easy inning. Seven and eight have been dispatched. Obviously a little different against an American League club because there's no pitcher batting. Because they don't play by the rules in the American League. Miller made editorial. His... Right. <laughs> Feel free. We've got about, what, 500, 600 hours of Cubs baseball this summer, so whenever you have an opinion, you let it fly. Uh, Miller made his uh, Major League debut against the Cubs in Seattle, 2013. Clemson product. Inside, one and two. No, people are saying it's a bugle, not a trumpet. How about we say it's Let's a go horn? horn? Yeah. <laughs> and the tag applied, and that will be the inning. A one, two, three second for Travis Wood. It's one nothing Seattle. Let's go to our downtown uh, Chicago studios for more with Ayanna Crystal. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Well, the biggest story out of Cubs camp this spring has been the outstanding play of Chris Bryant. His agent, Scott Boris, has publicly challenged the Cubs front office on whether or not the highly touted prospect will begin his season in the big leagues. It's become a heated debate around the league, and our David Kaplan caught up with Theo Epstein in this CSN exclusive interview. 
The only part about it that bothers me is that um, he certainly could have picked up the phone and, and called me before going to the national media about this. He never called up and asked me, you know, whether Chris would make the team and how I saw the situation. So just from a personal level, in terms of professional respect, that that would have been something I would have done in his shoes. The person who's handling this with the most professionalism and maturity is Chris Bryant. You know, I couldn't be more proud of how he's handling a very difficult situation. As far as when he makes his major league debut, um, whether he'll be part of this opening day roster, we haven't made put together our final roster yet. But you know, I can say this: this is my 13th time um, sort of uh, putting a team together at the end of spring training. I've never once put um, a young prospect on an opening day roster when he had to make his major league debut. Welcome back. It's a one nothing ball game as we head to the top half of the third. Fans looking to customize their ticket package can choose the Cubs 12-game flex pack. These packs allow fans to select from two marquee games, such as opening night or summer weekend dates versus the White Sox, plus 10 additional games from each month throughout the season. Overall, fans can, can select from 49 total games. So you got it. 12-game flex plan. Two marquee, 10 additional, 49 total. Cubs.com for information. Great to see our colleague and a Chicago guy, Rick Riz, the radio voice, the longtime voice of the Seattle Mariners. And he wanted us to say hi to, as he said, the best brother in the world. His brother Don and Don's wife Patty, who are watching tonight in Palos Heights, Illinois. Underway here in the third, 1 0 on Mike Olt. Out. You do not want to get in the way of a Taiwan Walker fastball. A little chin music. Sometimes the hitter will take umbrage and put a big swing on one, see if he gets a fastball here, 2 0. He did. And he took umbrage, took a big swing, but came up empty, and that's the beauty of 95 miles an hour board. It's nice and easy, too. Nice, easy delivery ball really jumps out of his hand. Looks like he's playing catch. Pitching and defense led the way for the Mariners last year. Mentioned their struggles offensively, and it's it's always hard to quantify because of the ballpark. Um, but they were down near the bottom of the league and run scored. But they made the fewest errors of any team in the American League, and had the lowest team ERA. Yeah, they were eliminated from the wild card on the final day of the season. Result grounds out. In some ways, kind of like the Cubs, you know, they, they uh, had their first winning year since 2009. They have not been in the postseason since that great year in 2001 when they won 116 games. 187 last year. And that coupled with uh, some of the additions. Expectations are high. That is a pitcher hitting eight, Travis Wood. And he's one of the best hitting pitchers in the game today. We'll usually give you a pretty good at bat. It'll bring up Alcantara batting ninth. Getting out of our routine a little bit this week, which is fine. I, I don't mind it at all. A night game tonight, a local four o'clock start over in Mesa tomorrow, and then back to a one o'clock start on Friday when Jeff Samarja will face Jason Hamill. That'll be fun. White Sox and Cubs. Mm -hmm. Two and one on the switch hitting Alcantara. And we will 
we'll chat with the Cubs new hitting coach in the bottom of this inning. John Maley Chicago native. Back out of play. Like he wants to throw that curveball, and it's a beauty. As he strikes out Alcantara, and we will go to the bottom of the third. One nothing, Mariners. The Mariners lead bottom of the third, and uh, great to have with us from the Cubs dugout, John Maley, a Chicago guy, Southsider, but uh, grew up a Cubs fan, right? Because yeah. your dad didn't give you a choice? How did that happen, John? No option in the home, um, <laughs> close to Sox Park, but um, been a Cub fan my whole life. I grew up that way and watched all the Cubs growing up, and it was a uh, huge Cub fan. So I, I'm sure it means a lot to you to, to wear that uniform. Yeah, after 20 years of professional baseball and be able to get back home for the one of my favorite teams and, and be a major league coach has been a dream come true. Who was your guy growing up? Who was your Sam player? Sandberg and Sean Dunson because I play shortstop, so I like Sean. Swing and a miss by Ricky Weeks. When you fielded a ground ball, did you throw it as hard as humanly possible yeah, across the diamond? Absolutely. I took about five <laughs> steps, wound up, and then threw it as hard as I could. <laughs> well, it's interesting. You come here, so you're learning a lot of new guys. It, Obviously, you haven't uh, worked with in the past, but Chris Coughlin, uh, Dexter Fowler, just to name a couple, you have worked with. So that, that had to help a little bit, right? Yeah, it helps a lot. Um, having a relationship with Coughlin, seeing him through the minor leagues, and then being a chance to be his hitting coach in his rookie of the year. And then um, Dexter last year, um, coming to the uh, Astros and getting to know him and then building a relationship and watching him have his best year away from Coors Field in, in, in his career. Um, coming into this season, it helped a lot having a uh, relationship with those two guys. Uh, you know, timing is important in life, and your timing joining this club is, is seems to be a very good time for you with, with all the good young hitters that are in this system, that are in the big leagues and on the way. Uh, it must be a very exciting time to be working with the likes of Solaire and Bryant and Baez and Russell and on down the line. Yeah, no doubt. You know what? Coming up, I was a uh, hitting coach for the uh, Marlins and had – Miguel Cabrera when he was a kid and Stanton and Coughlin and those guys and then going over to work with uh, the young guys with George Springer in Houston and batting champion Jose Altuve and you know I have a lot of experience working with these young players and it's helped me be able to handle uh, this young group uh, understanding how to handle them and being patient and kind of still teaching while they're in the big leagues. There's a two two to weeks as he pops it up and it'll be handled by Mike Gold. So it's interesting uh, you actually 
were with the Cubs organization for, what, a few days and then got hired by the Astros. So you probably didn't have to send Theo your resume this past winter. <laughs> no, right? it worked out great. Yeah, I was the, uh, I went in, I was a senior advisor of player development with Toronto and I talked to the front officer and I wanted to be a hitting coach again. So I said, I'm going to go back to the minor leagues. And I went and interviewed with the Yankees and uh, became their hitting coordinator. And then a couple days later, went with the Cubs, became their hitting coordinator for two days. And then they ended up interviewing with uh, Cleveland Indians for a major league job in Houston and actually got both jobs and chose Houston uh, going with Bo Porter so I that was a crazy week let's put it that way oh my gosh no kidding there's a pitch and Jackson swings and misses so a uh, Coglin so um, you had him as rookie of the year season last year I thought he was terrific and he's had a very good spring when when he's going right what is he doing well he's using the whole field and, and you know he was an amazing hitter at one point. Then he had the injuries, and it was the leg first, and then the shoulder, and never could get back to being healthy. And I think last year he came in, signed a contract with the Cubs, um, went down to the minor leagues, got his swing back that he had in 2010 when he was rookie of the year, and then um, it's just carried over. He's, he's just amazing to work with. 2-1 from Wood is inside. So, um, you know, you, you mentioned some of the guys you worked with in the past, and you could probably find comparables. You know, Stanton reminds you, or maybe Bryant reminds you of Stanton or something to that effect. But the one guy who's really unique that I see is Javi Baez. Um, you know, is there a comparable, somebody you've worked with in the past that reminds you of Baez? Well, there's not a lot of guys that I had, like what Stanton and all those guys. They weren't in Miguel. I mean, Miguel was amazing when he was 16. He'd be inside out, be able to go the other way, strike zone discipline. You know, Javi is such a big, strong swing, but the talent and the athleticism within the swing is amazing. The amount of torque he creates and bat lag and those type of things. You know, he's had success all through the minor leagues. We've got to remember his age, too. And, and you know, just getting him the right approach and, and learning how to play the game under control and understanding the speed accuracy trade off with his swing. Certain situations require more accuracy, so he's going to have to learn to shorten up in those situations. And other times, he can just let it go. And he's trying to find that balance now. Jackson will get second. So, you, 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 from your point of view, it's it's more about approach than the mechanics. The mechanics of the swing are fine. Well, I don't know. The, there's or, some work here you can work with that. You can work with that. It, it, it's all about approaching to get to the big leagues. The difference in the minor leagues big leagues is and when you have a weakness, the other team can exploit it. And then your job as a hitter is to be able to adjust back. So you'd like a swing that allows you to adjust back. And if you have a lot of length in your swing, then you're, you're probably going to have a lot of holes in, in a certain area. And then you have to cheat to get to it. And that's when you get exposed. So what we're trying to do is just shorten up his pre-swing movements, get him in a uh, hitting position a little sooner um, and more under control so that he can make those uh, late barrel adjustments in his swing. John, has Soler swung at a pitch out of the strike zone yet? Uh, I don't. If he has, I haven't seen it. I don't think I've seen it. Either. Yeah, he's. I mean, it's off the charts. The, ma the maturity in terms of knowing what the strike zone is. No is, doubt. And right? you look at a guy with that size, and, and you know, usually hitters with long levers, there's length in the swing. He is so short and direct, and he's so short to the ball, and he stays in the zone forever. But he doesn't have to be dead on time and uh, still be able to put the barrel of the bat on the ball. And it's tough to get in on him. I was watching Abreu from the White Sox the other day and, you know, just watching his film and how deep he can make contact and how short his swing is for a big guy. And that allows him to play the game deep in the zone as well so he can make better decisions. He doesn't have to hit everything out front to, uh, to drive the ball. One thing Joe has talked about is Cano didn't like that call. Not happy. Strike three, two outs. Joe has said there are going to be times where he's going to tell his guys, don't get to the park until 4 o'clock because he doesn't want guys sitting around all day necessarily. Um, J.D. and I have talked about this in the past. Most hitting coaches, it's work, 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 swing, 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 and you're there for whatever guys need. Um, do you believe at times that less is more, that yeah. you want guys to back off a little bit, just take a breath? No question. There's only a couple guys here that we have some mechanical things that we're still trying to iron out, and obviously that takes reps. But the majority of them, Bryant and all those guys, their swings are so good that it's just more of a maintenance program. And then also spending more time in the video room, watching how the opposing pitcher's trying to get them out, trying to help them with the plan in the box going into that night starter or how we're going to attack the bullpen. And, and that isn't a physical thing. That's just a mental thing. And, you know, we'll have an advanced meeting every day, and um, then I'll individually meet with each player going over how this guy's pitched in the past and what adjustments do we want to make that night against them. Well, kind of, go ahead. Jason. I was going to say, what kind of feedback are you getting from your hitters tonight on, on uh, Taiwan Walker stuff? Well, I seen him last year when we were in Houston, and um, the thing is, he's pounding the strike zone. He's 95 to 98. He's got a little cutter, and then when he gets you off it with that breaking ball that he can throw for a strike. So it's like a comfortable. It's, it's not like he's wild coming at you, but the ball is getting on you in a hurry. 
John, we really appreciate taking the time. Congratulations. I know you're going to be locked in uh, April 5th doing your job, but I hope you're able to maybe take a step back and let it all soak in because it's pretty cool to have you back in Chicago. Yep, I wake up every morning a happy man, trust me. John, thanks for the <laughs> thanks, time. Thanks, John. Okay, boys. Yeah. That's John Maley, the Cubs' new hitting coach. You know, Southside Cub fan growing up. It's good stuff on, the, man, on Baez you know, and Soler. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how about that? He says Jorge Soler has not swung a pitch out of the strike zone yet. And his crew strikes out. Wood with a couple of punch outs. It's one nothing Seattle. Fourth we go. Cubs trail the Mariners one to nothing. Looking for a way to make your business stand out from the uh, competition. Host your best customers and guests in a private suite at Wrigley Field. The Nuveen Investment Suites can accommodate anywhere from 15 to 55 guests and include food, all you can drink, and parking. To book your premier experience at the ballpark, visit Cubs.com slash suites. Not a whole lot going here against Walker early on. Infield hit by Castro in the second, but that's been it. Miguel Montero has been uh, charged with a passed ball on the uh, previously called wild pitch, allowing Jackson to get the second, just in case you're keeping score at home. Could cost him a Cactus League gold glove, perhaps. <laughs> Good. That foul. It's a, a little breezier out now than it was earlier. At least I'm noticing it for the first time. The, the, the flags up there on mm -hmm. top of the batter's eye in straightaway center field. Whipping around pretty good. Strike three, got it. Well, this kid hasn't given up a run yet this spring, and he is on top of his game here tonight. Ahead in the count, you have to worry about the split finger. You have to worry about the curveball. And, oh, by the way, here comes 94. And Fowler can't get to it. John Maley um, made an interesting comment. That you, you hear from a lot of hitters on certain guys. Uh, and I go back to the, you know, Josh Beckett versus A.J. Burnett um, 10, 12 years ago with, with the Marlins. Hitters hated facing A.J. Burnett because they had no idea where the ball was going to go. Even though Beckett could hit 96, 97, he had better command. And it was a much more comfortable at bat. And I think that's what Maley said about Walker. Doesn't mean that you're going to have success against him. But yeah, a guy can throw 97 and it can feel more comfortable because he's got a four seamer well, yeah. that he pretty much yeah, can pretty spot straight. where he wants. Yeah, you know, late movement, 
is problematic for hitters. They feel like if they get enough looks at a guy, if his fastball is pretty straight, even if he's 95, 96, they, they should be able to get to it. Now, the difference here is he's also shown that good changeup and the good curveball, so he gets you off that fastball a little bit. I think there's a little deception too. I think you know, he's very quiet in his delivery and a little, little, maybe a little short arm in that delivery and seen a lot of sw late swings at that fastball. Swing and a miss, two outs. Easy gas up above the hands, very difficult to get to. Only been one ball. Leave the infield so far for the Cubs. The Sweeney fly out to right in the second. Montero's lumber there, and he said, no, 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 no I'm going to use it. <laughs> uh, overzealous bad boy. <laughs> Montero couldn't catch up with a high heat and strikes out the side. Taiwan Walker dealing one nothing Seattle. The untold story of Michael Jordan's first ever game in the Windy City as a Chicago Bull. Do you believe it was played in a high school gym? Chuck Garfine has the story this Sunday night at 1030 on Sportsnet Central. That is a good tease. I am uh, I'm intrigued. One nothing Seattle. Michael's first game with the Bulls was in a high school, high school gym. gym. Hmm. So here's a question okay. that will not be answered for a long time to come. Who will have the better major league career, Kyle or Corey Seager? 
the bird in the hand theory yeah. would say take uh, yeah. the older brother, Kyle. But yeah. Don Mattingly's talking about the shortstop, Corey Seager, who is only 20 years old like he's going to be Cal Ripken. Mm -hmm. First round pick of the Dodgers in 2012. Tremendous upside. There's another brother, too, that the Mariners drafted a couple of years ago. Justin Seeger. Okay. No relation to Bob. Bob uh, does not have an A in his surname. There may be a Bob in their family or a Robert, but it's not the the singer. Fowler in center. Comes Ruggiano. There, there's our guy. Yeah, I'm probably going to go with Bugle. I like Bugle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Strike called. Breath by Travis Wood, the wine and the all one. That's Just fine. low. So last year, um, National League starting pitchers collectively pitched to a 3.73 earned run average. Travis Wood was up over five. The year before, he was in the low threes. So you split the difference. It's reasonable to think he could come back and pitch right around league average, right? 375, 380. As your fifth starter, if he does that, I mean, you'd take that, wouldn't you? Absolutely. Good changeup to make it two and two. Montero wants to go in with some heat. And it was out over the plate, and fortunately, Ruggiano fouled it back. Well, we talked to Chris Bazio, you know, early in the spring, and... I think after that all-star season, in, in some ways, you have that one great year. And I think some guys, I don't know if they panic or they think, well, I have, to, I have to do something different because all of a sudden everything's different for me. And I don't know if it, it was a lack of preparation or just, you know, he wanted to take a little time off after a 200-inning season, which you can certainly understand. It may be... Uh, Treated it a little differently this offseason. Did you do the same thing every offseason? And I know you didn't work out like guys work out now, but more or did, less. Did your seasons affect how you more or less in it? terms of the uh, no? I don't think so. I mean, just you know, took some time off right at the end of the season. Then you started to get into your conditioning work. Castro ranging to his glove side, and he'll make the play. Two outs. I think the difference in the game now is when players go home at the end of the season, they're given an off-season program. Right. And, you know, here's, the, here's your conditioning program. Here's your throwing program. When I was playing, it was more kind of loosey-goosey. You just did what you felt you like you needed to do. Uh, you might be talking to some veteran guys when you first were in the league, saying, you know, how much do you throw? Because there was always that concern. You don't want to do too much. You don't want to go into spring training and all of a sudden blow out because you did too much off the mound work in the off season. Obviously, you didn't want to do too little because you had to be ready to compete. So I think they've gotten a lot better at kind of setting some parameters for, for healthy guys. Obviously, if a right. guy's coming off an injury, his program's going to be a little different. Well, it used to be spring training was to get you ready for the season. Now you're supposed to be ready for spring mm -hmm. training. <laughs> Maybe not timing for a hitter and all that kind of stuff, but... If you're not in shape, it'll be all over Twitter, that's for sure. All the unflattering pictures. 
Coglin makes the catch, and that'll end the inning. One nothing Seattle. Let's send it back to our downtown Chicago studios for more with Ayana Crystal. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Well, Friday, right here on Comcast Sportsnet, you'll see the White Sox and Cubs duel on the diamond. It will be a battle of former Cubs teammates Jeff Samarja and Jason Hamill. This spring, we caught up with Hamill, who revealed some of his pitching secrets. Slider is my favorite pitch, and it's something that's developed over well, the last two or three years is when it's really been good. Um, I, I threw it in the minors, but I, like I said, I was using the curveball more. Uh, unfortunately, not to the <laughs> way I should have been doing it, but uh, you know, you learn. I'm a far right. Uh, I, I, liked, I like to really make sure. The reason why I'm on the far right side is because of, of a pitcher's, uh, what you're trying to do is attack the plate. You need to have your arm, your glove side needs to be strong so you need to stay behind the ball and that's what they always talk about with the arm side or glove side so I want to create the angle to where if I'm going down and away I really have to stay on the front side to get that angle to go down glove side so it's, it makes it almost over exaggerates my idea of making sure that I'm going to finish on the outside of the plate you can go here and you know sometimes you move around the hitter really can't tell where you are on the mound and that will help sometimes but I've just always been to the far right side toughest out you know, this is, yeah, this is, this is a funny one because, I mean, the guy played in the, in the league for a while, uh, a lefty, for me, <laughs> it was Fred Lewis. I you may not know the name. The guy was, he was a great player, obviously, against me. He started his career like nine for nine off me. I could not get him out, and I was throwing the kitchen sink at him, everything I could throw. You know, I, I might as well just told him, you know, when he stepped up, just go to first, and he was probably going to steal second off me, too. Uh, as for, like, big names and stuff like that, um... I would say A-Rod, he was, he was real good. I mean, you know, it's obviously, you know, I won't even get into that. Um, Paul Konerko, probably one of the best hitters I've ever faced. He was a guy that could handle both pitches on the outside and the inside. Um, just an outstanding hitter, knew exactly what he wanted to do, and he could go with the pitcher. You know, it's almost like he was a catcher thinking along with the pitcher. So um, those guys for sure are very tough outs. Castro, Sweeney, and Listella against Taiwan Walker, who has faced the minimum through four. Castro with an infield single in the second. Yeah, you've seen a lot of takes like that where the hitter just, you, you just get started late and you can't pull the trigger on that fastball. Committed with that swing. So Castro, I mentioned, turning 25 yesterday, already owns 846 major league hits. He should, assuming he stays healthy, go over 1,000 this season. Picked up by Miller. Cup fans, tickets are still available for the matchup on Tuesday, April 7th. The Cardinals are in town for that opening series. First pitch is 7.05, and the first 30,000 fans at the ballpark will receive an official 2015 Cubs magnet schedule presented by Jack Daniels. For more information or to purchase tickets, visit Cubs.com. Up and in on Sweeney, and Zanino wants to chat with Walker. So you've been here a fair amount now. Uh, do you think the clock, the in-between innings clock, which might be affected a little bit by, you know, adrenaline and TV and all that stuff once the regular season starts, do you feel like it's had any effect keeping guys in the box? Have you noticed anything um, different? Yeah, it, the, the pace does seem to be a little better. Guys are staying in the box for the most part. As Sweeney takes a stroll, that's, that's, although he did hit a foul ball. It's uh, interesting that you asked that because that was one of the things I was, I meant to ask uh, John Maley about was what kind of feedback he was getting from his hitters, whether they were comfortable with it. We'll ask him next year. Let's ask him next year after we do the Vegas trip. <laughs> I just think the psychological effect of having a clock in the ballpark between innings does get guys to... to Pick it up a little bit. Relievers getting ready and understanding that there's a certain amount of time to 
throw their eight warm up tosses or what have you. And there are purists out there who hate the idea of a clock, but there is no clock once the game's the game action starts. Just understand that the clock is between innings only. Now, Stella. You're, you're talking about psychology. That would be an interesting experiment to put a clock up there, counting down. Like during an at bat, a completely meaningful clock, but to see if the hitters would respond to it in some way. Meaning, how would you look up all the see 10, 9, 8? The guy would, you know, even though there's no rule in place. Oh, I see. So just put it. Yeah, just see. see. Oh. Okay. See if you could influence the human mind that way. You would. the cutter one and one and the pace of this one is being completely dictated by Walker He's getting the ball getting on the rubber and going to work and the Cub hitters back on their heels See, Lestella was able to get a piece of that a high fastball where most have not. And that's the, you know, that's the skill set of Lestella. He doesn't have a big swing. He's got a short, compact swing. He'll take his walks. He fights off tough pitches. He handles velocity. He's a, a good, valuable piece to come off the bench against some hard-throwing relievers. Miller swings across to end the inning. That is the fourth one, two, three already for Walker tonight. will go head to head. The Hawks will host the Blue Jackets. Don't miss Chevy Blackhawks pregame live starting at 7 on Comcast Sportsnet. A 4-1 loss at Philadelphia tonight. 1-0 Seattle with the lead. The Mariners got a first inning run and to this point it has held up. 8-9-1 for the home team. Charge into that one in the opposite field, and as JD mentioned, 
There is a uh, a wind that's blowing straight out, and he hit it really high and just got it out. Zanino did not hit for average last year, but he did hit for power. It's an off-speed pitch. Looked like a changeup. is kind of hung up there about mid-thigh for Zanino. Good finish with that swing and a good result for him. Cut and a miss by Miller. Batting stance kind of reminds you of Craig Council. How about no batting gloves? Yeah, I got the old style stirrups on. Well, Council would take his hands way over his head as he got ready to hit. Down along the left field line, and nobody can get it, except for a fan on the bounce. I think the ball ball boy wanted to make that catch. Game of 500. Yeah, he should have called a little more aggressively. He had the best angle. <laughs> Miller was uh, supposed to be in a battle. It'd be the primary shortstop with uh, Chris Taylor, but he got hurt. Taylor did, so it looks like it's Miller's job. A broken right wrist. So he's out. Did you play 500? You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. 500. I, I don't want to mention a game that nobody knows what we're talking about. And I'm trying to remember. It's like 100 points to cut it in the air, 50 on the bounce, whatever. Yeah, and However you would do it. Yeah, one, one, one bounce was 50, two bounces was you know, 25 or something like that. Most sandlot games you played when you didn't have enough guys to field the team. Yeah, uh, I remember at my dad's softball games, the kids would all play pickle. Mm -hmm. You'd crush two uh, soda cans, mm -hmm. place them about 50 feet apart, and then and you know, run down. Be 18 yep. kids running between the two cans <laughs> as the, the, the safe havens. Mm -hmm. And we used to call it uh, hot box okay. as well as pickle. near the first base dugout and it's Olt with room on that side warning track. We also used to play a game at the uh, park called Screen Ball. So <clears throat> so you put the you put the hitter out in the middle of the diamond like maybe towards second base and you hit back into the backstop. Okay. And the pitcher would just lob it in and you and you'd have like three defenders guarding the backstop. And it was a two-tiered backstop, so anything that hit the lower tier or that got through the infielder was a single. And then up above, like the far corner panels were triples, then doubles, and then there was a real small piece of fence right in the middle, and that was an automatic home run. So, so. You, you tried not to hit it over it? But if you hit it over, it was an automatic out. Gotcha. So it was back control game. And if you hit it out what of the whole... What about the house across if the street? It, if you hit it out of the whole park, where it went over the backstop and the fence that, that you know, the perimeter of the whole property... That was an automatic three outs, changed sides. Unless the mailman was going by and retrieved the ball and got it back into you in a timely fashion. <laughs> Were you good at that game? Uh, yeah, it's back control. Yeah, it was pretty good. And then it was fun. It was a defensive part of it was the most fun. Oh, Diving yeah. all over, trying to knock the ball down. One and two. Net ball? Screen ball. Screen ball. Them. And the, and the losers had to buy the RC Colas. That, that was the payoff. Mm. Pretty good pitch. Uh, his last start, Woody's last start. We didn't do it, did we? Somebody I was watching it in some telecast. He really, I thought he was really getting squeezed. Uh, yeah, he was. Uh, I did that game. Game against the White Sox? Yes. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, he had a couple of guys I thought out on strikes, and then they followed up with hits or home runs. Tap toward third, and it takes a left turn. So wait a minute, you didn't know if you did the game or watched somebody else do it? <laughs> I remember it watching it. I remember watching a television screen or monitor, <laughs> thinking, "Man, he's getting squeezed." I couldn't remember if it was in a booth or on my iPad. <laughs> Three, two. I'm going to get out of play. I may have been listening to you and Mick do the call, and the call was so good. I was visualizing exactly what was happening. Good answer. Change up. And it was up in the zone. Again, yeah. Grounded the other way for a base hit. He, he shook to it twice. Uh, Montero called cutter in, then backdoor cutter. He shook both those off. I think it's not so much that he doesn't want to throw Montero's thing. He just wants to work, work on this pitch and, and start to implement it a little bit more. He's been hurt with it a couple times in this inning now, the home run and now this single. But I like, I like the idea. I like the idea of throwing his change up a little bit more generally. He has a good one. He's just made a couple of mistakes with it here tonight. That if he can get comfortable with that changeup, it'll help set up that cutter in on the right-handed hitters. Outside on Cano. So I don't know if he would answer the question, but that would be the good question to pose Chris, to Chris Basio, the, the, the Travis Wood ERA question. If we were to say to him, we'll give you a four ERA for Woody. And, of course, ERA doesn't mean everything, but just say a four ERA, would you take that or what's behind the curtain? In the right center, and the question now, will Jackson score? And it looks like he will pretty easily. That ball is going to go all the way to the wall. Cano with an RBI double. We've seen a lot of him the last two spring trainings, and I feel like after just about every at-bat, I find myself saying he can just flat out hit. Yeah. Well, you know, he's, he's on a Hall of Fame path, isn't he? He's 32 years of age. He's put up big numbers already. If he continues to do it at this level for another five or six years, no doubt. He's got 30-plus uh, doubles in each of his first 10 Major League seasons. And I saw a tweet from somebody earlier about, you know, I mentioned how smooth he is defensively. And I know there are times in New York where he, he took some heat, Cano did, for not hustling or not running hard. I think he gets penalized for making the game look easy. And I don't think it's as easy as he makes it look. <laughs> there are certain guys, mm -hmm. they just... They're just really good. Yeah, and they I just, think they that, look that, like they're gliding. Yeah, and, and, and I just think his heart rate is uh, is slower than other guys. And I think in this game, J.D., by and large, that, that's, a, that's a huge help. He doesn't let the moment get to him. That could be trouble. Now that's going to stay in. Boy, Cruz just missed one. A towering flyout to end the inning. They get a leadoff homer from Zunino, two-out double by Cano, and it's now 3-0 Mariners after five.
Welcome back. A 3 0 Mariner lead now. We head to the sixth inning here in Peoria. Are you in charge of planning your next social gathering for the office or friends? Bring your group to Wrigley Field and enjoy special perks only available inside the ballpark. The Cubs offer special ticket packages for groups of 15 or more. The number to call is 773 404 4242 or visit cubs.com slash groups. Underway here in the Cubs sixth and a strike on Mike Holt. We're talking about uh, comparables to Walker and folks of a certain age. Let's we'll think about maybe Hall of Famer Jim Palmer. Big tall righty right over the top of that four seam fastball in the big curve. Like we're going to see uh, Chris Bryant play some left field tomorrow against the Angels. Um, and he's on the trip. He may even get out there a little bit tonight. Yes, he is on the uh, travel roster. And homered again yesterday against Oakland. His ninth. Somebody pointed out to me on Twitter uh, yesterday, he'd be hitting 300 if he only counted his homers. Yeah, well, we did the deal the other night. If, if, you, <laughs> if you took the, the at-bats, you would expect to get in the regular season, and he continued to hit home runs at that pace. He did like 168 home runs. Which can't even do that in screen ball. Swing and a miss. One away. If you missed it. And uh, Mick and I were calling the game and Mick said he didn't even get all of it. And I agreed with him. And so now we are kind of parsing his home runs in terms of did he get all of it or not. <laughs> But he got enough of it. One and one on Travis Wood. Nine career homers, at least one in each of the last five seasons, including three each of the last two years. Uh, in the category of advanced stats, his OPS plus over the last three years among pitchers, second only to Zach Greinke. Yep. He slugged 429 last year. That's above league average among all hitters. Well, you talk about psychology. Mm -hmm. So everyone looks at a guy like Travis Wood and says, well, he, he'd be, you know, if he, he played another position, he'd be a good hitter. But if he's not a pitcher, would that affect how pitchers work to him, even though pitchers don't admit that they. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So like if this is a great example here. 3-1. There was no doubt he was going to get a fastball. And that's 3-1. So, you know, if Rizzo's up there, maybe he doesn't get a fastball in that count. But the skill set, you know, the, you know, he's got good bat speed. He's very balanced in the box. He's such a good athlete. I'm not convinced he couldn't be a competent player somewhere else on the field. Oh. He draws the wall. <laughs> One of the better bats we've seen tonight against Taiwan Walker. Six punch outs. He got three in a row in the fourth inning. It's been a lot of high fastballs, but he's also shown a good off-speed pitch and a real good curveball. So he's got the, the whole mix. Nice lively arm. 
He was a little bit of a hanging cutter, but he got away with it. You get a lot of swing throughs at that elevated cutter or slider. Yeah, we have all these principles that we just throw out there all the time and things that are so, but this is a game of paradoxes, and I, I like seeing guys who kind of go against the grain. You can work up in the zone. <laughs> People say, you got to keep the ball down. Mm -hmm. Well, no, he's a classic no. power pitcher. <laughs> you, know, you, you can start down to get ahead in the count, then elevate that fastball. Ah! Mm -hmm. Feathered change up there, looked like. I'm going to try another one. With the runner at first, the Cubs with only one hit tonight, trailing 3 0 here in the sixth. Oh, base hit. Wood will stop at second. That'll bring up the tying run. Lefty up in the bullpen right now for the Mariners. It's Rick Waits, their pitching coach. I'm going to go with Tyler Olson in the bullpen. All right. Well, there's one lefty on their list for the night. So. Fowler with two on and one away. In there for strike one. Look at Fowler's batting average, and you say it hasn't been a good spring, but the on base percentage is double because he's taken seven walks. That could be two. Look at that play by Cano. Four, six, three, an inning ending double play. I don't know if Cano was yawning as he turned that one or not. Wow. Three nothing.
CSN watch the Bulls battle the Bucks in a potential first round playoff preview. Coverage starts at 6.30 right here on CSN Chicago. You see how uh, Milwaukee beat the Heat last night? I did not. Going, guy was going for a game time layup. Missed. Ball got tipped out. The guy just hit a desperation three at the buzzer to win it. Pretty exciting. You might want to go on the internet. I'll check it, the game and check yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to put that and make a little mental note. Here's Pedro Stroke. So far, so good for Pedro this spring. Punch down nine and five innings of work. And Buck ADERA last year, his first full season with the Cubs, a successful one. 221 ERA for 65 appearances, struck out 71 in 61 innings. Works primarily with a mid 90s fastball and a hard slider. Every now and then, a little split finger pitch. Watch Robinson Cano do what he does. And you talked earlier about the effortless nature with which he plays. Just kind of glides over there. No panic. Yeah. He's uh, made five consecutive All-Star teams, six overall. And the last second baseman to make five in a row was Robbie Alomar. He ended up in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Are, you, are you bullish on the Mariners? Do you think they're the team to, to pick out West? I don't know enough about the division. Uh, I like the, the Cruz signing. Yeah, ju I'm just not sure yet. Yeah, it's an interesting club, isn't it? Because they have... Uh... Lead off walk. You know... Cano and Seager were all-stars last year. They're among the best at their positions in the American League. Um, first base production with, with Morrison, probably not going to be, certainly you wouldn't say above average in the American League for that position. Right. Uh, Carlos Rivera will run for Seager. I, I, I'll answer that question this way. I don't really have a rooting interest, but I want to see Felix Hernandez pitch in the postseason at some point mm -hmm. because he's the best pitcher in baseball who hasn't pitched in October. So is that is that a good enough yeah, answer? Sure. Oh. And strike on Ruggiano. Yeah, I guess based on the record last year and how close they were, it would be hard not to like them. One and two. I think it's a really interesting division. The A's made a bunch of moves in the offseason. So they've retooled. How good are the uh, upstart Astros going to be? Are they ready to really compete? Are they still a year or two away? Yeah, I think they're I think they they've kind of stumbled a little bit here in their rebuilding program. I guess the other question is the fate of Josh Hamilton. Did I read they're going to try to figure it out by opening day? Yeah, I haven't MLB. read anything on that lately. Yeah. 
swing and a miss strike three. Gianna likes to hit the fastball. That's not a fastball. Well placed. And he's out in front. I'm not sure what that was. I was initially thought slider, but might have been a splitter. Morrison chops one to Alcantara, and they're only going to get the lead man. If you're unfamiliar with the Josh Hamilton story, reportedly uh, had some sort of drug relapse. And MLB's trying to figure out what the proper response to that is. But widely known a uh, recovering addict. Should it be a, a season-long suspension? Should it be just sending him to treatment? Nobody's quite sure how it's going to play out. Patrick Brady. Running for Morrison. Josh Hamilton, by the way, salary this year, $25 million with the Angels. Powell tipped into the mitt, and Strope, after that leadoff walk, retires the next three. Three-nothing Seattle. Let's go to our downtown Chicago studios for more with Ayanna Crystal. All right, gentlemen, thank you so much. Well, earlier today, Andrew McCutcheon cut his MVP locks for charity. But it might have been Joe Madden and the Cubs who started that trend. On Sunday, members of the team shaved their heads for the Respect Bald campaign, which raises funds for kids battling cancer. Our David Kaplan has more from Arizona. Before Sunday's game, the Cubs spent time giving back for charity. The entire coaching staff and most of the players in front office shaved their heads for pediatric cancer research. The event, spearheaded by new Cubs manager Joe Madden, drew a nice crowd before the Cubs game versus San Diego and raised significant money for St. Baldrick's Day, an annual cancer fundraising event. We have some really nice hair on our team, so for our guys to give it up, including the managers, for some of us it's, um, you know, it's, gonna be, it's, it's a bit of a sacrifice, but nevertheless it's worth it. I'm always looking for things to help galvanize the group. Um, the fact that uh, guys that have never had their head shaved walk around the clubhouse looking that way. Uh, again, you look at the whole group out there standing together, everything I try to do, all the theme trips during the course of the year, I'm hoping to get that kind of an impact where um, there's a unity uh, component to the whole thing and also a risk-taking component where you're stepping outside of your comfort zone a little bit. All those things I think are important. The Cubs have talked all offseason about being a close-knit team on and off the field and the turnout for today's event was big. Pitchers Edwin Jackson and Jason Mott both talked about the chemistry that is developing in camp. It just shows that we are we in it together. You know, we're all in together, and we, uh, we take the field together, and we do things on and off the field as a team together. So uh, it's a lot of fun to come out for a great cause and have everybody shave their great hair that they have. We, we got a good group of guys. You know what I mean? We got a good group of guys with, with some talent, and, you know, it's on us to go out there and do what we're capable of doing. We head to the seventh. Mariners uh, lead the Cubs three to zip. Cubs invite you to take advantage of free remote parking and shuttle services on night and weekend games. The remote parking lot is located at 3900 North Rockwell. For details, visit Cubs.com. Well, the good news, Taiwan Walker is done for the night, but they have brought on their closer here in the seventh inning, Fernando Rodney. And all kinds of other changes. Rodney and Strope, they go to the same hat guy. The same <laughs> milliner or whoever it is that makes hats. He's their closer. He uh, led the league with 48 saves last year. 
Had a 285 ERA, was an all star for the second time in his career. Jesus Sucre catching. Carlos Rivero is at first. Timmy Lopes is at second. Miller still playing short. Patrick Brady at third. Leary Bonilla is in left. Sean O'Malley in center. And Dario Pisano is in right. Bunted foul. And third baseman Brady was deep. Hardman tried to take advantage. Rodney's been around a good while now. Came up with the Tigers in 2002. Didn't really lost a whole lot off that heater. Can still go mid 90s, and he has an outstanding changeup. There it is. Got a little toe tap. He's got a little funk in his delivery. Would you say uptown funk? Yeah. That will be the most played song in Major League Baseball stadiums this summer. An Ooh, uptown funk song. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Two two to Coglin. Tip, strike three. You have to tell yourself to stay back for the changeup, and that causes you to be a little tardy on the heater. striking out twice against Walker who was as advertised in his six innings two hits one walk he struck out six yeah, he's got good arm action mm -hmm. on that changeup yeah he really sells it kind of jumps at the hitter um, yeah so we're talking about the Mariners and their their hopes for this year if Walker is the number five guy, then obviously that's a very deep rotation. That one pounded to deep left and off the fence. And Montero on his way to second, and he'll stand there with a double. showing good off-field power just misses hitting this ball into the bullpen settle for a one-out double staff just announced uh, Walker is available in their clubhouse in 10 minutes if you want to go down and talk to him. I'm just giving you maybe the option. Maybe he'll, training. maybe he'll show me how he throws his curveball. Right. Line right at third. Brady just had to open his mitt. A loud out off the bat of Starlin Castro. Two away. Yeah, that's one of the differences, right, between the regular season and spring training. They make the starting pitcher available to the media during the ball game. Mm -hmm. So Sweeney with two outs and Montero at second.
One and one. Jeff Samarja will be the White Sox opening day starter. Would have been Chris Sale, but he will not be ready on opening day. Certainly something Jeff is uh, used to. This will be his third straight opening day start. Two in a row as a Cub. Sale battling a fractured bone in his right foot. Again, we'll see Jeff with the White Sox against his former team on Friday afternoon. There was one other pitcher to make back-to-back -back opening day starts for both Chicago teams. Jamie Navarro back in the 90s. Boy, I remember that uh, start in Pittsburgh? He was really good. <laughs> Cubs lost in extras. Was it one nothing? I think it was. Yeah. A little walk through the home run. Sweeney strikes out. We'll stretch here in Peoria. It's 3 nothing Seattle. Peoria, bottom of the uh, seventh, Cubs trailing 3 nothing. And among the changes, and I don't have all of them quite yet, looks like Junior Lake is playing third, which is interesting. He's a former infielder who has played pretty much exclusively the outfield, although there was one play where the Cubs didn't they have five infielders last year. Yeah, you're right. They did indeed bring him in. Man, he's like razor sharp here in the early going. <laughs> Here's the veteran left-hander Phil Coke. Um, signed late March 7th. The Cubs brought him into camp. Veteran left-hander. Spent the last five seasons with the Tigers. Prior to that, he was with the Yankees. Well, Joe Madden values flexibility, and uh, he was talking about Chris Bryant getting some playing time in the outfield. We see Mike Holt over at first base tonight. So Junior Lake going to. Tries hand at third. Uh, looks like Alcantara has moved over to play short. He did a bunch of that in the minor league, so he can provide support there. Well, I'm guessing here on a couple of these guys is Miller rolls one into left. Yeah, it's Matt Caesar in left. Albert Almora in center. Mike Baxter's in right. You mentioned Alcantara moving over to short. Lestella to second. Yes. Yeah. 
Chris Mariscal running for Miller. And former Cub John Baker, former Cub catcher and pitcher John Baker. If you were wondering where's John Baker, well, there he is. He's with the Mariners. Be two, four to six to three. With Stella Alcantara and Olt. Does uh, do we know if John Baker has a chance to make this ball club? Know what their pitching situation is behind Zanino. This is Sean O'Malley. O'Malley. That's my impersonation of the cat in the Aristocats. In case you were wondering. Okay. You ever watch that movie, The Aristocats? At all no, I have not. I've seen The Aristocrats. <laughs> that one, I'm guessing, was a little less G-rated. Uh, Sucre, who's in the game, he is on their 40-man. One and one the count. Coke uh, brought in on a minor league contract, but pretty good chance he'll head north with the team next weekend. Yeah, so it looks like Baker's kind of third on the depth chart right now. Okay. So. Well, we wish him good luck. He's a good yeah, guy. Absolutely. Well, he was third on the depth chart going into Cubs camp last year. And he made the club. 3 nothing, Seattle. Welcome back. 3 nothing ball game as we head to the top half of the eighth. Live Cubs baseball is back in 2015 with MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. New hurler for the Mariners. 6-3 lefty Tyler Olson. Well, he's going along nicely this spring. An ERA of zero. Nine innings, 11 punch outs. He hasn't walked anybody. He's retired 26 of 31 batters faced this spring. Probably grew up a Mariners fan from Spokane, went to uh, Gonzaga. So 
So facing La Stella. Tommy 0 for 2. He's made three outs. Get into a double play in the second. And he takes a strike. Giordano Ventura will be the Royals opening day starter. Announced by Ned Yost today. So it'll be Ventura against Samarja on April 6th. Duffy, Volquez, Vargas, Guthrie to follow for the Royals. Olsen will pick it up. It's a tough AD for a left-handed hitter with that delivery of Olsen. Olsen a couple of professional seasons under his belt last year. Split time between Class A and Double A ball as a starting pitcher. But with this delivery, they may rush him to the big leagues and use him as a lefty specialist out of the pen. That's tough to hang in there for a left-handed hitter. Sweeping breaking ball, inducing weak contact. And Contemplating him as a lefty specialist the way they used him here tonight. That's what he was in this one as he'll make a pitching change. We'll be back in the 8-3-0 Seattle. Here's right-hander Carson Smith, 6'6", 213. Those are his spring numbers. A September call-up last year. Appeared in nine ball games. Yeah. Was effective, eight and a third. Didn't give up anything. At 10 saves at Triple A Tacoma last year, go along with a 293 earned run average. He was their minor league relief pitcher of the year in 2013. Nobody on, one out, and the pitch to Mike Alt. High in the air. It's going to stay in this spacious yard, though. O'Malley's got it. Sorry, what is it? O'Malley. O'Malley. Colt joins a, a host of Cub hitters with an 0 for here tonight. He's managing just three hits so far in this ball game. Eleven thousand two hundred twenty-four in the ballpark tonight. Beautiful night here in Peoria. Oh. Oh. 
the short hop by Brady, and the inning is over. And not much happening with the Cubs bats tonight against Taiwan Walker and company. Bottom eight, three zip. Afternoon, Crosstown Rivals will square off in Mesa one more time. The Cubs hosting the White Sox Friday at 3 on CSN Chicago, brought to you by Apt Electronics Appliances and more. Look forward to Jeff Samarja and Jason Hamill. <laughs> This is Timmy Lopes against Hector Rondon. Hard throwing Hector. Breakout year of sorts last year. And so far so good this spring. Five appearances, an inning at a time. An ERA of zero. Four, two. Only 20 years old. And he went around, according to Lance Barrett, and he's out. Uh, Hector is the closer last year, 29 saves. Velocity was typically in the upper 90s. Slider was a developing pitch for him throughout the year, and he gets off a nasty one here. Really gets on top of that one. Good downward tilt. Dario Pisano. 15th round pick in 2012. From Boston. Contra gloves and he throws to the new first baseman Chris Baleka. You know, we had John Baker earlier, Justin Ruggiano with the Mariners. Um, Chris Russon is with the Rockies. QG Fujikawa is with Texas. Just a few ex Cubs in the uh, Cactus League.
I think I read where Chris Russell was just optioned out the other day or set so, to minor league camp. Yeah, he uh, had an ERA of 643 in four appearances with the Rockies this spring. So Darwin Barney the other day with the Dodgers. He was playing third base. Yeah, I bumped into him at the hotel. He moved into our hotel uh, where I'm staying just the other day. Said he felt good about his chances to make that ball club, but they just signed an infielder from Cuba. They're very high on. Hector Oliveira, six-year deal. And got away from Rondon. Sixty-two point uh, five million dollars, reportedly, and a signing bonus of twenty-eight million. Hector Oliveira. He's 29 and he's going to turn 30 yeah, soon. Yeah. So it's not like he's a kid who is going to start at eight ball. Dodgers uh, they have a little bit of a different look. They've got Jimmy Rollins at short. They've got Howie Kendrick now as their second baseman. Yasmani Grandal will be taking over much of the playing time from A.J. Ellis back of the plate. Yeah, you but know, they still so have Andre Ethier who says, I want to be an up. everyday player. Yeah. <laughs> still too many outfielders. And uh, Ryu's hurt, right? Yeah, so. yeah. Strike three called. Rondon, two punch outs and a walk in a scoreless eight. Last chance for the Cubs in the night, trailing 3 nothing. Baseball on Comcast Sportsnet is brought to you by Apt Electronics, appliances, and more. Pleasing people since 1936. Cactus League 
action continuing. About a week and a half away from packing up and heading back home. Dominic Leon is on. Well, things have not gone very well for him this spring. In three and two-thirds innings, he's allowed 10 hits. 12-27 ERA. But a very small sample. It could be just one bad outing. Uh, last year was his rookie year with the Mariners, and he pitched well 57 times. He took the ball last year and went 8-2. That could be kind of a meaningless stat, a one-loss record for a reliever. But he did have a 2.17 earned run average. And like so many relievers in the game today, he rushes it up there in the mid-90s. Strike called on Alcantara. Mindy had his ups and downs in his first go round in the big leagues. And I think he's going to be a really good player for a long time. Projects as a super utility guy at the moment as he breaks his bat. Picks up his second hit of the night. Yeah, like a lot of the young Cub hitters, his issues were not enough contact when he swings and misses, but the skill set is there. He's got quick hands. He's very athletic. He's strong. Stronger than you might think when you first glance at him. And the versatility is what really makes him special, the ability to play all over the field and, and play a lot of positions well. Oh. Caesar out in the right center. Comes rallying here with nobody out as Alcantara will come around. And he'll score, and Caesar's got a triple. Three to one. And the tying run will come up. And that Caesar continues his fine spring. Yeah, hitting the ball with authority. He's hit three home runs uh, here in Cactus League play. Sets the hands low and then gets loaded up into a good hitting position. Front foot down. Boom. Little mishandle on the relay here. They might have had a shot at him at third base. That would have been a mistake to get thrown out at third. But he got away with it. Albert Almora takes a strike. Almora's first plate appearance tonight, now playing center. Going to come all the way back here in the ninth. Up the middle. Fielded by Mariscal. He dropped it. And Almora's aboard. Caesar in, it's three to two. And it's an error. It'll be an RBI for Almora and an error on the shortstop. This play earlier in the ballgame by Miller, and again you see Mariscal kind of retreating a little bit, sort of getting after that ground ball. Maybe took a peek to find Almora going down the line. run is on base. Montero started the game. He's still in there and he takes a strike. Single triple error to start the inning. Two. Well, when Miguel wants to swing, he does not get cheated. And look for a pitch you can drive until you get two strikes and then be willing to shorten it up a little bit. 
Pretty close at first. That's a quick move by Leon. Quick feet. <sighs> More kind of wise to it now. Much happening against Walker, Rodney, Olson, and Smith. They've rallied here in the ninth. Could not hold up. That's strike three. Yeah, it looked like that bad head went a little too far. Here comes Mike Baxter with Jonathan Herrera now on deck. Now you might see Al Mora think about it here. At least the Cubs trying to do something aggressive. Doesn't need to be the case because Baxter singles to left. That does get the tying run to second base. Couple of shots at it here. Here comes Herrera. of your screen the tying run go ahead run is at first that's Baxter switch hitting Jonathan Herrera oh. on the corner the regular season game the third base coach will be thinking about the arm strength of the outfielders but but if Gary Jones has an idea about any of these kids and how well they throw. That's Valeka on deck. Pitched out in the left, and it's going to be handled by Bonilla. So two outs, and it's Baleka. Cubs trying to avoid their third consecutive loss. They scored just one run on Sunday, losing to the Padres. They're beaten 14 to two yesterday, and. Just got their two runs here in this ninth inning tonight.
Anthony Giansante on deck for the Cubs, number 99. If he were an Edmonton Oiler, he wouldn't be able to wear that number. Which is great because I don't I don't know for a fact that Wayne Gretzky's number 99 is retired by the Oilers, but I, I think that's, that's a pretty good guess. You could make, yeah. <laughs> Two and one on Valleca. Cubs with two here in the ninth. Down a run. Foul back to the screen. Well, if we were playing screen ball, that would have been a game tying double. <laughs> get two in the ninth to come up a little bit short three to the final doesn't always happen this way JD but by and large tonight was about uh, the pitching obviously Walker was terrific uh, Travis Wood gave up three runs in his uh, five innings but solid work from guys we expect to be in the bullpen stroke Coke and Rondo yeah they were very good the back end of the bullpen good for the Cubs and, and Travis Wood really I thought he did a nice job that first inning he was in jeopardy giving up a big number he settled in gave up just the one and then you know, pitch shutout baseball until he got uh, cuffed up a little bit there in the